Well, around the world, millions of Christians live in fear of genocide. Many of them are killed by governments allied with the United States. How did that happen? We'll investigate what is happening to Christians in the Middle East after the break. The American invasion of Iraq was sold to America as a chance to bring democracy, freedom, and pluralism to the Middle East. Instead, for Iraq's ancient Christian community, which was large and thriving, it brought death and persecution. Today, Iraq's Christian community is a tiny fraction of what it was in 2003. Nobody ever says it, but it's true. What happened in Iraq is now happening in countries across the region and around the world. A new report warns that in many places, treatment of Christians is approaching the level of genocide. Juliana Temarazzi is the president of the Iraqi Christian Relief Council and a senior fellow of the Philos Project. She joins us tonight. Thank you very much uh, for coming on tonight. So give Thank us you. a sense, um, because it's one of those subjects that nobody in this country covers, as you know, of how the Christian community in Iraq is doing 16 years after the invasion. Uh, during 2003, we were one and a half million. Today, the Assyrians, Chaldeans, and Syriacs have been reduced to barely 200,000 people. Many of them are suffering from trauma. Many have lost everything in terms of businesses, their homes, their churches have been destroyed. Uh, and many of them are losing hope because really their own community is unable to protect themselves. They are at the mercy of either the Kurdish regional government or the Iraqi government. And we know, and you know, Tucker, Iranian influence now is skyrocketing throughout the Nineveh Plain, which yes. is extremely worrisome. So um, of the many figures in the United States who pushed that war um, haven't said anything that I've seen about the, basically the death of the entire Christian community in Iraq. And American churches have also remarkably said virtually nothing about it. Why is that, do you think? We're trying to be politically correct. We're not being bold to stand in the face of this. And frankly, what we have been going through since you've seen since 2003 and 4 is nothing new. Our community in the Middle East, we Christians have faced this for over 14, 1500 years. And I believe, Tucker, what has pushed this more, at least a little bit more, the world is talking about this, is because of uh, the savagery of ISIS was put on display through social media. So social media is really has become a dangerous medium for radicals who want to use it. Yeah, it would be nice, though, if Bill Kristol or Max Boot or John Bolton, for that matter, would apologize, uh, I, I, I think. So you were recently in Iraq and, and you brought back photographs that illustrate the condition of Christians. So we're going to put some on the screen. What are we looking at now? Well, we are looking at the church that was blown up in Mosul, uh, St. George. Uh, we are looking at a series of uh, the businesses that have been destroyed, homes that have been completely destroyed, schools are destroyed, Tucker. So there are, uh, the community has been really, the fiber of the community is destroyed. Out of one and a half million that are barely 200,000 left today, uh, it is, genocide really is not just about spilling blood, it is really, uh, destroying our community, our history. Our history is thousands of years old before Christianity. And today we are really left uh, to fend for ourselves. Very little help is starting to come from the U.S. And the world is, frankly, has turned a blind eye, the church as well as other governments, uh, which is really sad to see. It's shocking. Um, finally, I have to ask you about Syria, the Assad family, whatever you think of the Assad family, um, presided over a country in which Christians had space to worship and, and were not killed. What's the situation now for Christians in that country? Uh, in uh, just a few years ago, out of 1.7 million, we are down, the Christians in Syria are down to 450,000. Um, there are really the Syrian community split. Some are pro-Assad, some are against Assad. Uh, basically, the Christians in the Middle East are looking to see uh, how they can rebuild their lives, how they can live in peace. Because what happens, uh, persecution really looks different in different parts of the world. Uh, some places, social media is used to provoke uh, radical right. Islamists. In, in other places, uh, the, the country is exporting terrorism like Iran. So I think our government really needs to step up, be bold, and take the right measures. Yes. And we as American people should not put uh, someone who is anti-Semitic, uh, with anti-Semitic rhetoric in Congress, because remember, Tucker, it's first Saturday people, then it's Sunday people. Yeah. Christians in the Middle East should be a concern. Those are our allies in the Middle East, and they should be a concern for us, I think. Indeed. Thank you very Indeed. much for the work you're doing on this.
Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Vastly more power. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The holiest day of the Christian calendar turned to tragedy yesterday, as you know, in Sri Lanka. In a series of coordinated attacks, suicide bombers struck three Catholic churches as well as hotels in cities across the country. At least 290 people were murdered, hundreds more were wounded. Sri Lankan authorities say the attackers were affiliated with a local terror group. The attackers were radical Muslims. Their motives were religious. Their targets were Christians. None of that is speculation. It's true. And maybe because it is so true and so obviously true, nobody in authority wanted to say it out loud. So instead, they went to great lengths to avoid clear language. Quote, the attacks on tourists and Easter worshipers in Sri Lanka are an attack on humanity, tweeted Barack Obama. Hillary Clinton used the same awkward phrase. I'm praying for everyone affected by today's horrific attack on Easter worshipers and travelers in Sri Lanka, she wrote. Easter worshipers. Why don't you say Christians? Nobody worships Easter. There's a reason, of course. Euphemisms are never accidental. Our leaders believe Christians are the problem. They're the dangerous ones. They can't be trusted. Tell them the truth and they might go crazy and organize a new crusade, unsheath their swords and march on Jerusalem. You never know with Christians. Just tonight, the Washington Post ran a story with this headline, quote, Sri Lanka church bombings stoke far-right anger in West. As if you'd have to be some kind of Nazi to be upset about church bombings. That's what they seem to think. That's why our leaders consistently ignore the persecution of Christians around the world. When U.S. policy contributes to that persecution, and it does, they say nothing about it. For example, less than 20 years after we overthrew Saddam Hussein, three quarters of Iraq's once thriving Christian population is gone. They've either been murdered by Islamic extremists, ISIS in some cases, or they've been driven out of the country as refugees. In Syria, Christians live for generations under the protection of the Assad family. You're not allowed to say that anymore or even know it, but it doesn't make it any less true. It is true. And you can talk to the hundreds of thousands of Christians who fled the country since the U.S. began supporting the overthrow of Bashar al-Assad if you want to know details. But no one in the American media ever asks their opinion. Nobody cares. Nor do we care that so many of our allies in the Middle East, countries that receive billions in U.S. tax dollars every year, repress Christianity. Afghanistan, for example, receives billions from us every year. Why? So we can turn it into Belgium. But right now in Afghanistan, converting to Christianity carries a death sentence if you're a Muslim. The same is true in Saudi Arabia and the UAE, both countries backed by the United States. In Egypt, conversion is legally restricted, and while it doesn't carry a death sentence, polls show that most of the public in Egypt wishes it did. So where's our State Department in all this? Our State Department which spends a lot of time looking out for the human rights of people in countries you can't pronounce. They ignore it. When was the last time the United States pushed another country to treat Christians better? Well, in some cases, it would be pretty easy to do that. We could just demand that Saudi Arabia or Pakistan or Afghanistan, countries that are dependent on us, implement full freedom of religion before we give them any more U.S. aid. Why wouldn't we do that? Because we're being afraid of being criticized by the nihilists at the Washington Post?